Hey guys, welcome back to another Blender 2.8 tutorial, and today we're going to be talking about particles. And a couple days ago, I released this trailer for the type of effect we're going to end up creating. Pretty much looks like a fancy screensaver of some kind, very out of focus, lots of bokeh, and this actually turns out to be incredibly easy to make. So here's the version we're going to be making today. You see that I went for a more hexagonal look, but by the end of this tutorial, you'll know how to make all sorts of different versions of this. So hopping into Blender, we're going to delete everything except our camera, use end to toggle the transform options and position it more nicely. Next, we just want to make a particle emitter and I'm just going to use a resized plane and put that in front of our camera. Then in the particles tab, we can add a particle system and you see that they start falling from our geometry. Now on frame 200, the system stops emitting particles and we fix that by changing the end value. And then we can also increase the total lifetime of each particle so it has more time to fall. And these are falling way too quickly, so we will just decrease the gravity in the field weights options. And another thing to fix is that these particles are emitting upwards. So in the velocity options, we can just make our normal velocity a negative number. And this just reverses the emission direction. Now, since our particles start emitting on the first frame and our gravity is much weaker than before, it's going to take forever for our particles to actually reach the camera. So we want to take our frame start and set it to a negative number. And this basically says that the particles begin emitting before the first frame even happens. So essentially, we're changing our initial state. And also make sure that your lifetime value is big enough so that the particles can make it all the way down to the camera. Now something you'll notice is that when you go to the rendered view and turn off overlays, we're actually not going to see anything. And that's because these particles are just placeholders right now. They're just storing a lot of location data. So what we need to do is assign an object to them. So I'm just going to create a sphere. And I'm going to give this sphere an emission material because we want our particles to glow. And then to make this work, all we have to do is go to the particles tab in our emitter and then in the render settings, just change halo to object and then select our particle as the object. And now we can see our glowing particles in the rendered view. And to make this a bit stronger, I'm just going to change our world background color to black in the shading window. And now since we're in EV, we can turn on our bloom and mess with some of these settings to get a different look. And then also turn on depth of field. Now in our camera options, we can affect how strong the depth of field is going to be. And in general, the lower the f-stop is, the larger the bokeh. And of course, this depends on your focus distance because if your particles are in focus, they're not going to have any bokeh at all. And we can play around with the blades, rotation, and ratio to get a whole bunch of different looks. Once we're happy with that, I'm just going to mess around with the gravity a bit more, and this time to simulate, we can use the bake feature in the cache options. And when we hit bake, Blender is going to calculate and then hard set our simulation. Basically, think of this like our simulation is now keyframed. And this really improves the performance, so you can see what's happening in your simulation. But then anytime you want to change anything, you'll you'll have to make sure to delete your bake first. Otherwise, anything you do is not going to overwrite it. So I want this to look a bit more interesting. So let's add a turbulence field and play around with the strength. You see this makes our simulation much more chaotic. And because of this, I'm going to lower our number of particles. Another thing we can do to make this more interesting is in the velocity options, increase the randomize amount. This way, all the particles don't get emitted with the same initial velocity. And really, we just want to make sure this looks visually interesting. So let's pick a color for our emission and already this is looking much better. And in the render options, we can add a bit more randomness by adding some scale randomness. And because some of these spheres are now bigger than others, they're going to emit at different intensities. And these particles aren't moving down as much as I'd like, so let's force them down with a wind field pointing downwards. This way, there's one general direction for the motion. And play around with the settings until everything looks the way you want it to. And of course, we want this to look more complex, so in the emitter, I'm going to add a second particle system and duplicate the settings from before. Make sure to then hit this button, which unlinks the two of them. So now if we want to make a change in one system, it's not going to copy over to the other. And in the second system, I want a lot of particles that are much smaller. And we can have this system be more affected by gravity and less by our wind and turbulence fields. And to make these systems more distinct, I'm just going to create another particle object and give it a different emission color. Make sure that in the render options for the second system, we change our target to this new object. So now each of our systems is driven by a different object and we can play around with the look of this. And to make our pink particles brighter, we can increase the render scale on the first system. Now something I want to do for this is change the motion of the second particle system without affecting the first. And since we've already baked in our first system, we can add in new fields and just re-simulate the second system. So in this way, baking lets us make particle systems independent from each other, which is nice because we don't need to render out two different passes or anything like that. Now in the camera 
camera tab, we can mess around with our depth of field options and get this hexagonal look, which I actually like a lot. So now I'm happy with the simulation and we can start messing around with the compositing. So I'm gonna have our output be 30 frames per second and then we can head over to the compositing window. Make sure to enable auto render and use nodes and now let's create our node network. First thing we're gonna do is control shift click our render layers node, which will automatically link a viewer node. However, we still don't see anything yet, but that's just because we haven't rendered anything. So just hit F12 to render the current frame. And this should be pretty fast because we're using EV. And now we actually have something to work with in our compositing window. So I want to stylize this by adding some color overlays. To do this, shift A to add an alpha over node and we'll hook our render layers to the background. And then also add an RGB node for the foreground. And we're going to mask off this color. So just add a mask node and hook this up to the factor. And there's many ways to create masks in Blender, but what we're going to do is open up the image editor and pick our viewer node to show. Now just change view mode to mask mode and then create a new mask. And then we can just control shift click to draw out our mask path. Hit N to toggle the properties and then just turn this into a cyclic mask so it's a closed loop. To feather this out, just select all your points with A and then control shift drag to feather the mask. And now when we select our color mask in our node, we get exactly what we expect. So now let's change the color of this and make it less intense. To do this, just add a math node in between here and set it to multiply. And we want to make our value very small so the color is less noticeable. And now that we've done this, we can actually add another color much faster. So I'm going to add another alpha over node and pick a new yellowish color. And we can just use a flip node to bring our mask to the other side. And with another multiplication, we can edit the intensity of this color. Finally, let's add a vignette by adding another alpha over node in this chain and then adding a black color for the foreground. And for this, we need to make a new elliptic mask. So let's just create a new mask and then go to add and then add circle. And I want to rescale this so it pretty much turns into an ellipse and then we can feather this out with control shift dragging. So now we can assign our new mask and then add an invert node so the black will only be on the border. And again, add a math node set to multiply to make our vignette less intense. And I think we're done with this. So let's hook up our last node to the composite and this is what's going to output. And then in the output tab, I'm just going to set this to export as an MP4 video with high quality. And then one last thing to do, which will make our render much faster is to make sure that the render and viewport samples are set very low. And in this case, this won't affect the quality that much, but now each frame will take only a second or two to render. And then when you're ready, just hit Control F12 to render out the animation. And that is pretty much all you have to do for this effect. So now you know a bit more about particles and how to achieve this type of look. And of course, there are infinitely many variations on this. So just explore around with that. But I hope you guys like this tutorial and I'll see you guys in the next one.